Hello, and welcome to Engineers Edge GD&T Applications. So here we have an example where we have a thin wall cylinder, and that thin wall cylinder is 80 point five zero plus or minus zero three thousands long and the outside diameter of this cylinder will be manufactured at point nine eight five plus or minus ten thousands we have been told by manufacturing that they will need up to a 40,000 straightness on axes. And what this means is that in a worst case scenario, this thin wall cylinder axes could be built such that the form, the warpage if you will, could be up to 40 thousandths on axes. So we need to compensate for this. Because our straightness has been applied to our outside diameter, our size itself, that means that rule number one is negated, so that is no longer a fixed three-dimensional boundary from end to end. And regardless of the feature size, whether it's built at least material condition size or maximum material condition size, we're going to be allowed up to this 40 thousandths. So a number we should know for this thin wall cylinder is what would be cumulative worst case outside boundary. And the way we would calculate that is, is we would take our nominal size, which is 985 thousandths, and we need the maximum material condition size, so we would add the available tolerance from nominal, which is 10 thousandths. And then, since we can violate rule number one, we know that from end to end, this feature can be manufactured with a straightness of 40 thousandths on diameter. So, from here, we simply need to add these features, add these variables together, it looks like 8, 13, um, carry the 1. So we have an outside boundary cumulative of nominal plus limits of, uh, plus limits of size variability of 10 plus 40,000 straightness. And that's our outer boundary. Now an additional requirement is that when this external diameter, this thin wall cylinder, is installed into our receptacle feature and it's reciprocating, we will need a clearance not less than ten thousandths. So we know some information about our internal feature. And we know it will be some size. The internal hole feature will be as manufactured, not greater in size than plus or minus ten thousandths. And the straightness from the start of that hole to the end of that hole, or the relevant portions of that hole feature, will have a straightness not greater than thirty thousandths on axes. So again, since we're assigning the straightness 
to the feature of size, it applies to the axes, and rule number one again is negated. So, the way that we would calculate this nominal size is we would begin with our external worst case boundary given to us by our thin wall cylinder. So, that's one inch. 35 thousandths, and this will be my uh, size, and then we'll say outer boundary. And then we need to be some number um, greater than that. We will need our clearance in here. That was defined as 10 thousandths. I'm just going to put a C. And then we have a straightness of 30 thousandths in a worst case scenario. I'm going to add that as well. 30 thousandths. So that would be my straightness. And then since we're calculating a nominal number, I'm going to add that 10 thousandths from the maximum material condition size so that we just resolve a um, nominal number. So it looks like we've got 5, uh, 6, 7, 8. So 1 inch 85 thousandths looks like that should be our nominal size for this internal hole feature. So let's see if we can write this in here. Oops, row to 35. And here we are. Okay, so for a sanity check, what I want to do is let's calculate the worst case inner boundary of our internal diameter and then let's contrast it to our worst case outer boundary of our thin wall. So here would be our outer boundary. So to calculate the inner boundary of this whole feature I would take my nominal size which is 1 inch 85 thousandths and I would subtract the variability tolerance to achieve our maximum material condition size. Then I would subtract my straightness. In this case, it's 30 thousandths again on diameter. So 5, looks like 8 minus 3 and 1 would be 4, 0, 1. So worst case inner boundary would be 1 inch 45 thousandths. There's a 10 thousandths difference. Check for my clearance requirements. And that should be a reasonable approach and tolerance assignment based on the design criteria that we have. Now in regards to our clearance numbers and the actual feature sizes as I've shown in this illustration. They're not exactly what um, the engineer gave me. Uh, the application is proprietary. But nevertheless, conceptually, this is how this design would be approached with the given information that, um, that our engineer has. Anyway, thank you very much for watching our video and please take the time to check out our other GDNT applications video.